Hello friends, Brian Gailey here, Klamath Falls News. Welcome to Ask Klamath. This is Season 3, Episode 5 of our show. We're actually joined today by Heather Crowder. Heather is the Executive Officer of the Klamath Basin Home Builders Association. And today we're going to be talking about the association, the Home and Garden Expo, a new name for the home show, and we're going to be taking your questions live during the show. But before we do that, Brandon, roll that intro. Brian Gale, Klamath Falls News. Welcome to Ask Klamath. Again, we're joined here today by Heather Crowder, the Executive Officer of the Klamath Basin Home Builders Association. Uh, we're glad to have you on today. Uh, Ask Klamath is presented by Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. Special shout out to them for making this all possible. And Heather, what uh, I got a little short bio here on you. And it's a really short one, so I'm going to ask her to actually expand a little bit. Heather has been the Executive Officer of the Home Builders Association since 2013. Mm -hmm. It has been a resident of Klamath County for nearly 30 years. And prior to working at the KBHBA, she was with Jill Dwin. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. Can you fill in the gaps there, Heather? <laughs> I, I like my privacy. I'm, you know, it's a small town, and most people that, that do know me would know. Um, uh, okay, I, I have four kids, um, 21 to two and a half, so... I have quite the span of, of ages in my children, but my husband and I both went to school here uh, locally. We went to college here, and we just kind of decided to stay here because we like Klamath Falls. Kind of sounds like me. Just kind of decided to stay. It's no place better. Awesome. So, guys, we're going to be taking your questions for Heather live during the show. Go ahead and put those in the comments below. Um, and, and we're going to be taking questions on the Home Builders Association, the the home and outdoor expo i was corrected during the intro <laughs> home and outdoor expo and i'm sure i'm still saying it wrong no, you got it did i get it right you got it that oh, time. oh good <laughs> good so we're gonna be taking those and we're gonna actually be taking any other questions that you have live during the show so get those in the comments below uh now we got all that housekeeping out of the way you ready to get started with a couple questions bring it all right how did you get started as executive officer I got really fortunate and I, I spent a couple of years working as a customer service manager at Walmart and was about done being in retail again. So uh, some friends of our family had let my dad know that they had seen the job posting for the home builders and I didn't think I would be qualified for it. Uh, the job description was two pages long, it was ridiculous, but um, they went ahead and, and hired me at that point in time um, with a number of other candidates that were very qualified. Um, and they just kind of progressed from there. They really enjoy the job and, and the people I get to work with. What would you say is the best and worst part of the job? Well, the worst part, without a doubt, is doing things like this. <laughs> Nothing personal. Uh, love you guys, but uh, I'm not much for being out in the in the face like this. I prefer to work do my work in the background. But um, I just get to work with some fantastic people. We have some wonderful members um, that are good people who have been pillars of this community for a very long time. And we just appreciate everything that the community has done and allows us to be representative for them. Nice. So the worst thing is, is doing these type of shows and interviews and things like that. Yes. I can see you already turning redder than you are. <laughs> uh, so the best thing, what, what would you say is your favorites? The, without a doubt, it's the people. It's being able to represent our community, um, being able to show that, that our folks are very strong here and we are a very much a, a knit community where, uh, sorry, words don't always come out right. <laughs> um, one business has another business's back usually and, and there's just a lot of um, working together. Mm -hmm. And that, that togetherness in this community is important. It's part of what makes us who we are. Awesome. There's a lot of love out there, man. There is. All right. Well, guys, we are going to be taking a break here shortly. Uh, I know it's a little shorter than normal here, but uh, I'm not going to drill Heather just because she's uncomfortable. But if you have a question for Heather, again, revolving the Home Builders Association, the, the Home and Outdoor Expo, the new name for the what was the Home and Garden Show. Yes. Uh, if you got any questions there, go ahead and put those in the comments below. We'll be back in two minutes. Threads. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. 
There are roads and cars. There are houses and jobs and businesses, all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here, providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, the retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities, adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union, find your path. have your car taken to the shop of your choice. So my friend had her car taken to Excel Auto Body because she heard about their reputation for excellent work. They even gave her a written warranty that's good for as long as she owns that car. So Excel Auto Body is a very smart choice. Hi, I'm Rourke, owner of Excel Auto Body. No matter if the damage is minor or major, you'll want to choose us now. So if you are ever in an accident, you'll be ready. And remember, it's your choice what body shop you go to. Choose Excel Auto Body. It's your car, our reputation. Slow down. Slow down and move over. And move over. When you see lights, vests, or reflectors, please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please, slow down. And move over. Hello friends, Brian Gailey here, Klamath Falls News. Welcome back to Ask Klamath. It's Season 3, Episode 5. We're joined today by Heather Crowder. Uh, and this segment is actually brought to you by the uh, Klamath County Fairgrounds. Uh, Klamath County Fairgrounds wants you to know that happening this Saturday is the Mule, Door, Mule Deer Banquet. Uh, it's starting at 4.30 on Saturday. They also got a few other things going on. And they invite you to take a look at their brand new website. Head over to kcfairgrounds.org where you can learn where the Klamath County Fairgrounds can do for you. Heather, are you ready for some more questions? Let's go. All right. So in this segment, we're actually going to kind of focus on the association. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the next one, after our next break, we're going to talk about the new home and outdoor expo. i got to remind myself to say that right. Um, we, we have trouble with it, too. So you? we say the expo. It's easier. The expo? <laughs> well, then you might get confused with the fairgrounds that's actually in Center Point, right? That's that, the expo. So. That or maybe over in Lake County because their expo is coming up at the uh, end of the month, all too. Right. So with all that, what... For the people that are in our audience that may not know about the Home Builders Association, can you talk about what is the Klamath Basin Home Builders Association? The Home Builders Association was founded in 1968 here in Klamath Falls, and we are a, uh, a small chapter of the National Association of Home Builders, as well as the Oregon Home Builders Association. And what we do is we try to ensure that the local education is happening for contractors. We want to make sure that everybody is hiring a licensed, bonded, insured contractor, um, that those contractors are able to get their education that they need. Um, and then, of course, um, our state and national associations are heavily involved in politics. Because we're very small here in Klamath, we really don't have the resources to spend a lot of time in politics, which is actually my favorite part. I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> But um, we do get involved in, you know, things like working with KCC and um, with some of the rent issues that are going on, the lack of affordable housing. So we, we do get involved in some of those things and try to help behind the scenes as much as we can there, too. So, but that's what the association largely does is, is we're here to help and we're a community resource. Now, it is a membership organization, yeah, right? Who can and can't be a member? Who's it open to? The, the association is pretty much open to everybody. We, I don't know that we've ever really turned anyone down, but um, we, we do try to maintain a balance of um, builders or contractors versus um, associates is the other um, uh definition that happens we have about um we have just about just under 100 members right now and we've got about 30 members that are actual builders with a, a ccb license that are actually out there moving the hammers and and building the, the structures and then there's another 70 that are associates and that can be anybody from the guys that are doing the concrete work all the way through the gal that's hanging the drapes in in the home so um, we, we just have quite a mix and everybody is is welcome to join us and we do have a lot of um, nice benefits that we do make available because of our national estate and then local as well. Do you try to keep some of the members around that home 
atmosphere, if you would, that, that bubble, because you said you had contractors, all the way to somebody who may be doing drapes. Do you try to go in there, or are you like, uh, do you have supermarkets, for example, as members of the Built Home Builders Association? Where does that bubble kind of limit itself? Well, we try to stay within Klamath, or well, Klamath and Lake Counties, because Klamath Basin Home Builders, even though it says Klamath Basin, it's Klamath and Lake Counties that we represent. So we, we try to ensure that all of the entities that are, are structured with us are staying within them. We do have a few outside entities that have um, come into Klamath to start doing developments, and the, we have welcomed them into membership as well. So that, does that answer your question? Or? So kind of the location mm -hmm. of where the members are, but like the, the member, the business itself, um, you know, it, it, contractors, it's obvious that's related to a home. Windows, you know, insulation, mm -hmm. plumbing, electrical, all mm -hmm. those things make a lot of sense. But say, you know, title companies, mm -hmm. you know, because it's kind of related companies. to home, mm -hmm. banks. Yep. Um, but what, what about things that might be a little outside that realm? Um, we've actually, uh, Courtesy RV is actually a member of the association, has been for a couple of years now. Um, so they, they did an event with us a few years ago at the Home and Garden Show, and they became a member as a result of that. So we do have telecommunications companies, so it's it's really kind of a mixed bag of membership. Okay. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> all right. So moving on to a little different question. Uh, homeowners versus contractors and all those other people might be your members. Do you have resources for homeowners as well? Maybe because I know there's a there's a good do-it-yourself kind of movement going on out there. Do you have resources for those kind of people, or is it just hey, here's what we've got? We to don't. Offer? It it's not. Uh, we we just sent out our new website um, just recently, which is klamathbasinhba.org. Um, and there are some tips and, and tricks on there for homeowners on seasonal applications and things that they would want to do around their homes. We don't get too far into DIY because that may take away a little bit from our members who are the builders. And, um, but that doesn't mean we don't support um, individuals doing do-it-yourself. One of the problems that we do find, um, I've had enough folks come into my office and be like, I started this project and realized I was in way over my head and I need somebody to fix it. So that's usually where we end up is the folks that either ran out of time, the project ran way too heavy, or it was just out of their realm. Um, they'll call in and they'll be looking for assistance. I, I can just see the call. It's somebody who rented a backhoe, wants to dig a pool, and it's naturally filling with, with wa water. And they forgot to call 811 first. And, yeah. yeah, or they broke something. <laughs> yeah, I could totally see those calls. Yeah. Um, I would probably be one of those guys that make those calls. Uh, so another part of what you mentioned before is the KBHBA, Home Builders Association, works a lot with education. Mm -hmm. um, you said it was kind of rooted in that, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So is it is that like continuing ed that some of some of these electricians, plumbers, and contractors might need? Some of them, um, we, we start them out with their initial um, certification classes that are actually done through the state uh, crediting agency, which is the Construction Contractors Board. We do bring the Construction Contractors Board in here to Klamath Falls a couple of times a year, usually in the spring and the, and the fall. Um, and they do... Uh, an education class for the contractors, which is a continuing ed for them. It's on the rules and regulations that might have changed in the state in the last year. Um, we also will have uh, lead paint classes. So that's a big thing right now with most of our homes here in Klamath, unless you live in one of the new divisions. Um, a lot of the homes were built before 1978. And mm -hmm. if they were built before 1978, there's a very strong possibility there is lead in the walls. Of course, it can make you extremely sick if you either inhale or consume. Hopefully nobody's out there eating paint chips, but well, you never know. Uh, <laughs> different strokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do we do the training classes for that. It is a little more difficult for us to do that because we do have to bring the instructor down from Salem. But um, we do try to offer the class as often as we can. So continuing education, we'll do classes for the members and for other community personnel on anything from safe workman's comp issues, um, protecting their employees, protecting their business. We're working on some right now with um, business uh business knowledge in general so maybe some classes on excel we're not trying to compete with Clemson community college oit but we're just kind of there to kind of help give them a foundation maybe the courage to go take a class at kcc or oit now are those classes and educational opportunities only for members or is that open to the public no we usually open them to the public too um it there is a difference of um our members we would usually give them the classes for free but we might ask for um, somebody else coming in to pay a nominal fee usually around 15 
$15 for an hour, um, except for the lead paint. Lead paint's a little more expensive, um, again, due to bringing people from Salem. It's but, a little different certification type yeah. thing. Yeah, and we have to pay a lot of fees through the Oregon Health Authority and, mm -hmm. and other other entities. So that. how would somebody become a member? So it's, they're, maybe they're watching the show right now and they've not... They've thought, you know, maybe that's something I want to be involved in. Maybe it's not. They visit the website, went to Facebook, and seen all your different things. If they're ready to say, I want to be a member, what do they have to do? Easiest way is to go to our new website. Um, right up there at the very top uh, left side of the page is a button that says Join Now, and it'll give you the actual application form, and all you have to do is send that in and fill it out, set it in <laughs> with the, the check. Unfortunately, we have to charge for membership. Where does it membership is, dues start? It's four twenty five dollars a year. We don't differentiate between builders and associates. We try to keep the dues as low as we can. Um, and a portion of that goes out to national and a portion goes to the state. And then um, a small portion of it is kept here. So the four, $425, mm -hmm. and part of that goes to national and state dues mm -hmm. before it comes local. So mm -hmm. you're kind of locked into those pieces, right? Yep. All right. Well, Heather, thank you for answering mm -hmm. those questions. We're actually going to take a break here in just a moment. And now is a great time for you to ask your questions for Heather in the comments below regarding maybe it's maybe it's about membership, maybe it's about any, something we've already talked about, or maybe it's the Home and Outdoor Expo, which we'll be talking about here in just a moment. We'll be right back. Reds. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. There are roads and cars. There are houses and jobs and businesses, all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, to retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities, adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. Find your path. have your car taken to the shop of your choice. So my friend had her car taken to Excel Auto Body because she heard about their reputation for excellent work. They even gave her a written warranty that's good for as long as she owns that car. So Excel Auto Body is a very smart choice. Hi, I'm Rourke, owner of Excel Auto Body. No matter if the damage is minor or major, you'll want to choose us now. So if you are ever in an accident, you'll be ready. And remember, it's your choice what body shop you go to. Choose Excel Auto Body. It's your car, our reputation. Slow down. Slow down and move over. And move over. When you see lights, vests, or reflectors, please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please, slow down. And move over. Hello friends, Brian Gailey, Klamath Falls News here. Welcome back to Ask Klamath. Today we're joined by Heather Crowder, Executive Officer of the Klamath Basin Home Builders Association. And Ask Klamath is presented by Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. You saw their commercial just a moment ago. Uh, big shout out to them for making this possible. Um, we already answered some great questions regarding the Home Builders Association. If you're just tuning in, you're going to want to watch that on the replay. Uh, but we actually got some questions coming in about the new, newly named, I should say, Home and Outdoor Expo, right? We always known it as the, the home show or the home and garden show. Mm -hmm. Now it's the Home and Outdoor Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, you call it the Expo for short. Just to make my life a little easier. Make your life a little easier. Um, so we're going to actually talk a little bit about that here in this section. When When is that? When's that coming up? The Home and Outdoor Expo. The Expo is March 8th, 9th, and 10th. Again, at the Klamath County Fairgrounds, because that's the best place in Klamath to hold those kind of events. Um, and let's see, you probably don't make over the hours, but... Yeah, it's four days? Three days? Three. Three days. Three days. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And each day's got a little bit different. You can check that out on Facebook. There's actually a Facebook page for mm -hmm. that. You can ch check a lot of those details out there. Uh, and you guys are just in the event center, right? You're not scattered throughout all the buildings? Right. We're For right now, we're still just in the event center. The Rock and Gem Show is going on at the same time as, as the expo in the main building. So um, come in. Take, go to the expo and then go over to the Rock and Gem Show. Awesome. So what's the what's the reason behind the name change? What's going on there? Well, for 40, 
45, 44 years, the association has been doing the home and garden show, our home and home show, home and garden show. And that's just kind of a, cha- a sign of the changing times. Um, we get a lot of folks that will call us and they have questions because Angie's List told them this or, or so-and-so, but they those folks don't know our local guys and how to work with a contractor. So we try to give them assistance and guidance. And um, when it comes down to the Home and Outdoor Expo, the hope is to try to incorporate more of what makes living in Klamath a great idea or being in Klamath and just kind of showcasing some of those wonderful things that go on in our town um, besides um, just the everyday places to work. Okay. Um, what can somebody who's maybe never attended or maybe they took a few years off, what can somebody expect if they go this year? Well, they'll expect to see a lot of people. <laughs> A lot of booths. Um, we're we're still working on getting additional booths filled. Um, we do still have some spaces, and we will be selling booth space up until about um, March first ish. Um, there are some uh, some late fees that apply for registrations at this point, but they're not real expensive. So we do try to try to keep it as reasonable as possible. Um, we we are bringing in. Um, some new displays that are coming. I don't like giving away too much because I want people to come down and experience it. Um, there, there are some, I've got 12 new vendors, I think it is at this point, um, and still a lot of applications that are yet to come in. So um, we do have a lot of new vendors coming in. Um, everything from the guys that are going to be able to build your house or the banks that are gonna help you finance it, all the way through the folks that help you have a good time and, and enjoy your life. Are you able to name any of those vendors at this point? Um, I don't really want to name any names because if I start naming names, then I'm going to offend somebody else that I didn't name. <laughs> somebody you didn't name? I get that. That's okay. <laughs> How about this? Pacific Crest, one of your sponsors, is is going to be there as well. Very good. Um, how many can we expect to be there when it, come opening day? Um, we should have around 100 vendors about the time that the show opens. That's that's fairly common for the, the event. Um Actually, something I should probably do is I should say thank you to my sponsors as well, which is Colwell Banker Holman, Holman Premier Realty. Randy, I am so sorry I did it again. Um, they have been the title sponsor for the home show um, in the past for years, as well as Power Pack Party Time that helps us with all the pipe and drape. Um, and, of course, um, Linkville Roofing and Siding and Henris Roofing, who both helped to sponsor a couple of different things during the event, and then um, KOBI, KOTI, who does some um, some extra TV ads to okay. help the association. So, so is, is there stuff going on that's new this year with the, the Home and Outdoor Expo, or is it just a name change? Nope, there's new things going on. We actually have um, a lot of new presentations that we're working on right now with, with groups, um, different demonstrations and um, there, there'll be two stages now for those demonstrations and presentations, and we are hoping to get our schedule up in the next week and a half on our Facebook pages um, and our website, and that way people can start making a plan for which days they want to attend. Um, we will still have some great food being served there. Um, our candy gal is going to be back again, so for those of you who like fudge, she'll be there. Um, but we... Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I got lost off. You got, you got stuck on fudge. It's those lights. They're, they're <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so, well, with that, talking about the vendors that are going to be there and your booth space and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you, is it too late to get a booth now? No, no, it is not. We do still have some spaces. It is kind of a uh, first come, first served at this point, and that we can still do some juggling around and some moving, um, but it is getting a little bit tighter as, as the days go on. And what kind of vendors are you looking for? Basically, anybody that is involved in business in the basin, um, buying, building, selling a home, um, including anything that it takes to furnish that home or to help make the lifestyle that we have here in the basin. So anything from uh, somebody that has the construction materials through the artwork that can go on the wall. Mm-hmm. And all the way out to the guy that helps you, you know, go out and take a kayak and enjoy the lake. As I say, for <laughs> the outdoor part of things, it's, it's going to be that yep. part as well. Yep. And we are working on, on that one ad- actively and trying to get more of those individuals to come and participate in the show. 
Okay. Uh, we talked about booths and booth space, and if, if people want to know more, how do they? Where, where should they go to find out more if you got availability? Our our Facebook page, our website, both have the information, the basic information for the the event, the applications. Um, our map, I because it changes so frequently, I don't post it on the websites. It would just take a whole lot of extra things to go through. Um, but we can provide that information if they call and, and tell us, you know, because in in the event center you have the the concrete level up at the top and then you have the arena which is hard packed dirt um, during the expo but and there's different pricing level for those two areas but because um, the, some people may have concrete may be harder on their knees to stand on all day long whereas being on the dirt might be easier but they may have product that won't sit on the dirt mm -hmm. so if they can call in and tell us you know hey I want a 10 by 10 space and I don't care if I'm either place then we can say well we could put you in any of these places and mm -hmm. kind of help them guide to the best direction for them okay do you still have spaces for sponsors if somebody's got some money burning a hole in their pocket? Oh, God, I'd like to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we we do still take some sponsors. One thing for them to note is that you know some of the benefits that we would normally offer may not be available at this point. We're getting ready to go to press with our posters so that we can get those around town to remind people that the event is coming. And so the posters, you won't be able to get on them at this point, but... Um, we, we can still get them on the website and, and do some of the other thank yous that we can for sponsors. In years past, and this is actually a question we didn't talk about, I just thought about it. In years past, you actually had some food vendors on site as well. Are you going to have food vendors this year? Yes, we will. We still have the two food vendors. Um, again, one of them is Food Plus uh, Fudge, but then there is another one that will be there. And I, I guess I can name both of them, Mac and Cheese Steaks and, and the Bread Wagon with okay. Donna Ness. Very good. And, the, so it'll be nice to have them back again too. So now, a few years back, you incorporated a fee to enter into the home show. Are we, are we still there? Is yes, there still we cost do. To get in? The, we do, and it is it's three dollars for adults. It's free for kids seventeen and under. Um, we do take a dollar off of that um, for the food bank if you make bring if you bring a non perishable food item for donation, um, and then and we've actually generated around twelve hundred pounds of food for the food bank every year from the event. Oh, very nice. Um, so that's usually during a time when they can utilize the extra The donations help. are usually a little down this time of year. Yeah, yeah. So, and especially with us being that month earlier, because for the last five years, well, before last year, the last five years we've been in April. So it wasn't quite as, probably as helpful for the food bank, but now they're still trying to build their resources back up. So, okay. um, but the $3 fee, it does go to um, each of the, at, at all of the doors, there is a, a volunteer for another nonprofit um, there to help out. And we make a monetary donation to each of those nonprofits. So there's about seven other entities besides the association that will be helped by by those entry fees. Oh, nice. So the money doesn't necessarily go back to the association. It goes to other places within the basin yep, to help it them does. out. It does. Very cool. All right. So... Now, this is also not the only event that the Home Builders Association puts on every year. What are Correct. some of the other ones you guys do? The other major event that we do, um, aside from all the education and, and things like that, is uh, our golf tournament. And that is June 29th, I believe. I'm, I'm ch we just changed it. Um, we, it's been in, in August for a very long time. And we moved it into June because, um, I hope I didn't just say July a moment ago, but we moved it into June. It's the last Friday in June. It's been a Saturday for a long time. But because of, you know, we've, we've been having some horrible fire seasons here, and we do want to keep people as safe as possible and keep the event going. So we moved into June. We found a really great time to do it. The running Y has been fairly good to us nice. with, with that. So um, we look forward to having folks, and we make some donations out of that one to, to entities as well. So this last year we made one to the Eagle Keepers, and um, they're a, a, an official activity out at the, I'm trying to remember exactly what I'm allowed to say when it comes to this because of it being an unofficial activity. They're, they're a group of individuals who help to take care of our individuals from the base. It's best. I think that's the best way I can say it right now. <laughs> it's a good group. It's, it's a great, helpful cause of, of different things. So um, with that, Great questions, great answers. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much for doing that, Heather. We're actually going to be taking a break here in just a moment. Uh, and while we do, it's a great time to get your questions for Heather in the comments below because she's actually going to be answering those next. We'll be back. Threads. There are many threads that run through our region. There are churches and schools and little league teams that bring us together and bind us into communities. There are roads and cars there are houses and jobs and businesses. 
all woven together to make the fabric of our communities. There are financial threads that are part of that tapestry as well. For over 80 years, it's been our pleasure to be headquartered here, providing financial services to generations of our friends and neighbors. From that first savings account, to retirement planning, and all of the cars and houses and groceries in between, we keep your money local, investing it back into our communities, adding more threads to the fabric to make our community stronger. Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union, find your path. You can have your car taken to the shop of your choice. So my friend had her car taken to Excel Auto Body because she heard about their reputation for excellent work. They even gave her a written warranty that's good for as long as she owns that car. So Excel Auto Body is a very smart choice. Hi, I'm Rourke, owner of Excel Auto Body. No matter if the damage is minor or major, you'll want to choose us now. So if you are ever in an accident, you'll be ready. And remember, it's your choice what body shop you go to. Choose Excel Auto Body. It's your car, our reputation. Slow down. Slow down and move over. And move over. When you see lights, vests, or reflectors, please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please, slow down. And move over. Hello friends, Brian Gailey, Clown Falls News. Welcome back to Ask Klamath. We're joined today by Heather Crowder, Executive Officer of the Klamath Basin Home Builders Association. I always want to say Executive Director on that one, but different places call it different executive things. Executive Officer comes from the National Association. That's what they have there. Uh, in charge person at each facility or at each local be called so it's yeah but it, it happens frequently right. it, it's a lot to say though it executive is. officer klamath basin home builders association it, it's, it's too many words it's, it's too title. many words <laughs> uh so we are actually going to be taking your questions here live in just a moment i do see a couple of them in um, another one jessica will get to your question as well uh but before we get to those questions this is the time we call the soapbox within the show it's an opportunity for you to talk about whatever's on your mind do you have something to chat about? Well, I, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to just, Go we it. went back to our events just a few minutes ago, and I didn't mention, um, we actually have a Texas Hold'em tournament coming up on the 16th, so that's this, not this weekend, but next weekend, um, but we'll have that tournament, and we are establishing a scholarship out at Klamath Community College for the trades education, because um, I'm sure many people who have either seen this, seen our posts on Facebook or something, we just have a serious shortage of construction industry, whether it be our electricians, our plumbers, our contractors in for general contra construction. Um, I know our masons are hurting because uh, it's an industry that it's it's going to be a rough one on you, but they all pay very well. And so we do spend a lot of time going to the schools as well and talking about what the, the type of jobs that they could, students could go into. Um, and so education is probably one of the things right now that, that we're trying to work on with the community and understanding that we need more of our kids to consider going into blue collar trades um, just to keep our way of life going. So. So are, is your membership affected by the lack of tradespeople out there? It has been. Um, when the recession hit in um, 2007, 2008, um, our, our membership dropped two-thirds, three-quarters. We went from around 400 members down to around 100. So we got hit. There was a lot of folks who the construction industry just it bottomed out, and they, le they either left the area, took other jobs, um, had to tighten the belt and this was one of the things that they had to make go so we are working on regaining that and we've had a lot of folks that were had, had left have come back so or are planning to so we're working with that we picked up four more members this last month oh very so. nice now are you you look around some of the other areas if you travel a little bit you go into the larger cities portland seattle those areas and, and a bunch of places in between 
construction's booming in those areas. Are we having a hard time getting people to come work here in Clown Falls because they can do better in those larger places? If And especially if they don't have to travel to do it. Um, they already are working with building departments and, and codes that they already are aware of. Um, so it is a little easier for them if they don't have to come here. Um, but yeah, we've I, I get a regular phone call in my office every couple of days probably of somebody who is I need somebody that can come do this in my house and I've been able to get hold of anybody so I was told to call you which is great I I, I like having those kind of phone calls come to us because it means people are calling us for help mm -hmm. but I hate hearing it because I hate hearing that folks are having a hard time getting a hold of someone because there are construction guys out there and please um, the most important thing when you are hiring a contractor, make sure that you go online to either through our face or our, our website um, or through the Oregon CCB's website, which is Oregon, sorry, Oregon.gov slash CCB. I always try to turn it backwards um, and check the reference of those contractors. Make sure they're licensed, make sure they're bonded, make sure they're insured, because if they're not and something goes wrong on your job, it's going to be a whole lot harder for you to deal with getting back to where you should be. Understandable. It could be very, very, very difficult. Um, so taking a look here, we're actually going to take your questions here. Looking down the list, um, uh, my wife, Crystal, is actually asking, can vendors assist people on the spot? So she's going back to the Home and Garden mm -hmm. Show, the Home and Outdoor Expo. Uh, can people be assisted on the spot? Do they usually take appointments? How do they handle their clients? That would be up to the vendor themselves. We do have some vendors that um, that will be there that will be selling product on on the spot. Um, you had um, the Wooden Flag Company here a couple of weeks, two weeks ago. Something I think. like that. Yeah. Um, they will be at the Home and Outdoor Expo as well, um, and I know they sell sign sell some of the flags on the spot as well. Um, so, but you know, somebody like the roofers, they they will be probably making appointments and keeping uh, a list of, of when they do. But it's a great time to come and talk to those guys because even if you're not ready to do your project yet, you can get on their list so that you can find out um, how far out they might be because it could be three months before you can get on their list if you want that guy to do it. Um, and you never know, they might be offering some discounts if you come and see them at the expo and then you can utilize that when you're ready later on in the year. It's also a good time to window shop if you would. If there's certain things that you might be interested in but you don't know quite what you mm -hmm. need to do, walking around there is, is a good opportunity to Get perk, ideas. Get ideas, mm -hmm. you know, and perk that stuff up where you can maybe make a decision. Mm -hmm. Some great flooring will be on display. So I know that's always a big thing. I think I got a couple of floors in my house that probably should be done. Oh, sorry, <laughs> honey, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it, it is a great opportunity to come and see what's available and, and get ideas. Okay. Looking down the list here, we have a question from Travis Webb. Hi, Travis. Thanks for watching. Um, Travis is the owner and operator of Kirby's Curbside Cuisine. It's a food truck here in town, and he's wanting to know if you have room for another. Another food vendor. I don't believe that we are adding any additional food vendors at this point in time because we are trying to make so many changes right now. We want to make sure that when all of these guys come in, they get the right size piece of pie. No pun intended. Um, for a bad sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> that they get the right amount of, of kickback from, from being there. So um, I'm hoping that we will be able to see more food trucks coming next year. But Travis, I would definitely love for you to call me, give me your phone number. And that way, if we find that we have got a hard time keeping up, maybe we can get you brought in. So Awesome. Let's see. Jessica Chastain. I'm not seeing the whole thing here, so Brandon might have to help me out. Has there been any consideration with making a three-day pass for the expo to encourage people to go multi-day? That's what I'm seeing. Is there anything oh. else there? It's multiple days. Multiple days. Okay. Yep. Well, actually, we, we've already fixed that. that that's that been something that it, it's not printed on the tickets, and the door workers usually tell people. So I'm sorry if you did not get told that in the past. But um, once you have your ticket stub, um, you can come in every day of the expo. So you can come in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we've had some folks in the past who they've come in and they've talked to somebody on Saturday and, oh, you know what, we went home and we, we got to think about this and we really need to talk to them again. Don't want to wait until they come back. So just come on back and see them. We're happy to let you come back in. Just hang on to your ticket. So your ticket stub gets you in. All three days. You pay days. once. You only got to pay once. Mm -hmm. not, uh, right. Three days. Okay. Unless you want expensive. to, and we're always happy to do that. So, you know. It does go to a good cause, right? It does. All it right. does. A lot of them, actually. <laughs> 
So I'm not seeing any other questions here at this time. If you have something, go ahead and get those in the comments right now. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about, Heather? We just welcome the community to come down, and we'd love to hear what you think about the event. And if there's somebody that you would really like to visit with at the expo, we hope that you will either send us a note or let them know that, hey, I really think you guys should be there. And that way we can um, try to everything we can to make sure they're there for you. Uh, we did have one just pop in. Kimberly Elliott. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for watching. Uh, is there anything in the state legislature that is currently going on that is affecting building? There's a number of things, and like I did say, I, I let our state do a lot more of the political side of things just because I, especially this time of year, the state association, yes, because I just cannot get to as much of it right now. I know there's been some stuff, and, and hi, Kim, I, I remembered just after after you said her name is Kim Elliott from the Rental Owners Association. Mm -hmm. So she may be poking at me about the, um, the issues with rent control right now. And I know that our state association was present for some of those meetings that took place recently, and they are hoping to try try to mitigate, um, they're not going to stop that freight train coming, it sounds like, but they're hoping to kind of mitigate how much impact it's going to make. So with any luck, there there will be some control on that. So okay. or not control, but some help for that. All right. Uh, going back a moment to the KBHBA and the Home and Outdoor Expo, how, how do people learn more about you, what you offer, things like that? Um, again, best way, I, our our website, klamathbasinhba.org. Um, we just revamped it. It is a lot more user-friendly right now. Um, it has some great information out there. And of course, again, if anybody's got any questions, they can always call us at the office, 541-884-8570. They can email info at klamathbasinhba.org, or they can come on down to 205 Riverside Drive. We're in the same building as Chamber and Discover Klamath. Um, we're in Suite G, so we're kind of tucked away off to the side, but uh, we are usually there from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. We tucked away, but it's a quiet spot. It is. It is. It's very quiet. <laughs> Get some work done. It's nice, though. It is. So um, Facebook as well for you mm -hmm. guys. Yep. Uh, I think Brandon Two might Facebooks. have a gra graphic here for the Home and Outdoor Expo. We're going to throw that up there. Um, that's quite the, uh, the the Facebook link there, but you can just it search is. Klamath Home and, Ex Home and Garden Expo, Home and Expo, Home and Outdoor Expo. Mm -hmm. It'll come up. I found it. Uh, if I find it, you can find it. Um, anything else? Any um, other ways that people get all of you? That is, those are the best ways to get a hold of us. And I'm, I'm not shy about talking to people. I might not like these kind of th situations, but I'm not shy about talking to you if I run into you outside. Just be nice. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, not seeing any more questions. We're actually going to wrap up our coverage with Heather over here. Thank you again, Heather, for being a, being a part of this show. We appreciate it. Um, Ask Klamath is presented by Pacific Crest Federal Credit Union. If I didn't say that. I'm saying it again. I'm sure I said it a couple times. Uh, it is a production of Klamath Falls News. It's hosted by myself, Brian Gailey. Off camera is my son, Brandon Gailey, handling production. Thank you, Brandon, for everything you're doing over there as well. Uh, if you did not catch the entire live episode, you can do that anytime through our Facebook page as soon as Facebook's done doing its magic. Uh, you can also watch uh, on our YouTube channel as well as heading over to AskClamath.com where you can watch this episode and any of our other 25 episodes that we've got so far. Uh, if we've entertained you, if you learned something, like, comment, share. Let your friends know about it. Um, we we love that. We love you to to let everybody know if if you like what we did. Next week we got a really cool guest, John Van Dyke, the new athletic director for Oregon Tech. He's not necessarily new. He just celebrated his one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. John is going to be here in the hot seat next week, and after that we actually have Sheriff Caber joining us as well. So a couple of really good episodes coming up. Uh, on behalf of my guest Heather, thank you again for being here. I'm Brian Gailey. We'll see you guys around the basin.